Hello and welcome back to my new video. My name is Zahid and my channel is all about productivity, business and systems analysis, giving you tips and tutorials to be more self-aware, develop good work practices and ultimately make life that little bit easier. In this video I will be discussing the ever popular SWOT analysis tool which is used to examine an organization's internal capabilities against its external environment. So, the learning objectives for this discussion are as follows. Number one, a brief overview of a SWOT analysis. Number two, a breakdown of the SWOT analysis categories. Number three, how to conduct a SWOT analysis. Number four, an example SWOT, Lockheed Martin. And number five, advantages and disadvantages of using the SWOT. The origin of the SWOT analysis is not definitively known and it is likely that the tool has evolved over time through the contributions of multiple individuals and organisations. However, it is widely recognised that Albert Humphrey, a consultant and researcher at Stanford Research Institute and Ken Andrews, a professor at Harvard Business School, both de developed the SWOT analysis, albeit separately. Humphrey's work on the SWOT was established in a series of articles and later compiled into a book called SWOT Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities and Threats and has been influential in the field of business and management. Andrews, on the other hand, wrote that the SWOT is a useful tool but cautioned against relying on it too heavily, emphasising the need for a more holistic approach to strategic planning. I have previously discussed the PESEL analysis as an instrument to examine external forces impacting a business. Whilst it is a great tool, it doesn't give the organisation direct insights about the external environment vis-à-vis -vis its own business performance in a particular business market. Another situation of note is when an organisation is looking at a risky decision which could potentially provide huge dividends but also carries a hefty amount of uncertainty and possible long-term negative impacts. Information is needed to feed the decision-making process. A SWOT analysis goes a long way to provide this data and can extract the fit between a company's internal resources and capabilities, basically its strengths and weaknesses, against external possibilities, its opportunities and threats. As you can see, each term is placed in a 2x2 two two grid. You conduct an analysis on each grid and you will yield results in each compartment documenting them. Let's break each compartment down. The strengths of a business refer to the characteristics that give it an advantage over its competitors or help it achieve its objectives in a, in a better and more efficient manner. They are mainly internal to the organisation but can be external. Examples of strengths might include a strong brand, a skilled and experienced workforce, a unique product or service offering, long-standing product expertise, a strong financial position or even a favourable location. Identifying these strengths help organisations understand their internal capabilities and how they can be best leveraged against the opportunities, threats and weaknesses presented in the rest of the SWOT. The weaknesses refer to characteristics that put an organisation in a disadvantage relative to its competitors or hinder its ability to achieve its objectives. Like strengths, weaknesses are usually internal to the organisation. Examples of weaknesses might include a lack of resources or funding, a weak brand, low productivity, limited experience or expertise, a high turnover of staff or a poorly located facility. Identifying the weaknesses can help organisations understand their limitations and develop strategies to address them so they can improve their chances of success and better compete with its competitors. Opportunities refer to external factors that may present potential advantages or benefits to the business which can then be exploited or grasped for expansion, growth and development. Examples are new external trends, changes in market conditions, new laws coming into effect, 
new technologies, an opportunity to em- enter a new market, or to introduce a new product or service that meets a current or anticipated customer need. By understanding and acting on these opportunities, organizations can improve their chances of success and increase their competitiveness. Threats refer to external factors that may present potential risks or challenges to the business, such as new laws and regulations, a powerful new competitor coming into the market or many smaller competitors taking market share, talent drain, poor economic conditions, ecological effects, IT security threats, the list goes on. An organisation must address and develop strategies to mitigate the threats in order to survive into the long term and reduce vulnerabilities on an ongoing basis. To perform a SWOT analysis, you take the following steps. Number one, define the purpose of the SWOT and define in detail the outputs. This will ensure the analysis has definitive focus. Number two, ensure you have the right team to do the job and the correct reporting structures. It is important to involve key stakeholders in the process as they may have valuable insights and perspectives that can contribute to the analysis. Number three, gather and document information about the organization's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. This is the bulk of the work. Number four, once the information has been gathered, analyze it to assess the interaction of the elements across four different quadrants. So quadrant one, strengths versus opportunities. How does the company use these strengths to take advantage of these opportunities? Quadrant two, weaknesses versus opportunities. How does the company overcome the weaknesses that prevent it from taking advantage of its opportunities? Quadrant three, strengths versus threats. How does the company use its strengths to reduce the likelihood and impact of the threats? Quadrant four, Weaknesses versus threats. How does the company address the weaknesses that will enable it to avoid or overcome the threats? Number five, build strategies and goals depending on the results of the SWOT analysis. It is also important to review and update the results of the SWOT analysis on a regular basis to ensure that the organization's strategies remain relevant and effective. Okay, so let's have a brief look at an actual SWOT analysis of the Lockheed Martin US company. Please note that this was taken from the Analysis Without Paralysis 12 Tools to Make Better Strategic Decisions book by Babette, Ben Susan and Craig Fleischer. Uh, And also please note that the analysis is for illustrative purposes and wouldn't be relevant today. Looking at strengths, this is a prioritised list. Number one. Defence industry leader with a strong brand. Number two, strong research and development, produces innovative new products giving first mover advantage. Number three, diversified product portfolio. Number four, wide ranging revenue streams. Number five, long standing supplier relations. And number six, aggressive organisational restructuring and cost cutting initiatives. In terms of its weaknesses, Number one, heavy reliance on US government as a primary source of revenue. Number two, increased operating expenses. Number three, legal proceedings, contract misconduct. Number four, growing pension liability. And number five, high debt to equity ratio. In terms of its external factors, and we're looking at opportunities first, the market demands technological innovations. Uh, strategic acquisitions in terms of suppliers. Number three, share costs through strategic outsource, outsourcing and subcontracting. Number four, investment investing in commercial applications of defence products. And number five, proliferation of security threats such as terrorism. And finally, in terms of external factors and threats, uh, number one, defence defense spending cuts, new or expanded export controls, market limiting regulations, US international traffic in arms uh, regulations. Number three, strong competition increases margin pressure. Number four, disruptive technologies increase uh, research and development investment risk. And finally, number five, 
slowdown and or recession of global economy. Certainly that even applies today. After the analysis is completed, the team can create strategies to improve and protect the business by analysing the interaction of the elements across the four different quadrants. For example, under the strength opportunity quadrant, the priority would be to maintain market leadership by focusing innovation on future customer need. Under the weakness opportunity quadrant, the priority would be to create a strategy that identifies and cultivates new customer segments. Moving on to the strength threat quadrant, a priority would be to develop quantitative return on investment models, demonstrating cost and outcome advantages of Lockheed Martin winning US government contracts. Finally, under the weaknesses threat quadrant, the top priority would be to implement and expand Lean Six Sigma processes across all operations to meet contract commitments. So a SWOT analysis is a useful tool for identifying and evaluating the internal and external factors that can impact a business or project and the business can gain a better understanding of the current situation whilst developing strategies to take advantage of opportunities and mitigate threats. However, it is important to keep in mind that a SWOT analysis is just one tool among many that can be used in a strategic planning process. In fact, ideally it should be used in conjunction with other tools and techniques such as PESL to build a very detailed data set. A SWOT analysis should also be regularly reviewed and updated to ensure that it remains relevant and effective. Overall, whether or not a SWOT is a good method for a particular business will depend on the specific goals and objectives of the organisation, as well as its unique internal and external contexts. For me, as an analyst and consultant, the SWOT analysis is the preferred analysis tool to kickstart the strategy planning process, not the totality of it. Other tools play a part in the strategy planning process and I will be covering those at a later date. Finally, here are some advantages and disadvantages. Firstly, as advantages, it is is a straightforward tool that can easily be understood and used, making it accessible to a wide range of people within an organisation. It provides a complete and holistic view of the organisation. Number three, it may help an organisation to uncover hidden or otherwise unknown opportunities and threats. And number four, it can be scaled to be used in many situations and both at a micro or macro level within that organisation. In terms of weaknesses, it can be influenced by the personal perspectives and biases of, of the individuals conducting the analysis. It may overlook other important factors that could impact the organisation. Number three, a SWOT analysis looks at the current situation and does not attempt to predict future events or trends. That's for other tools uh, to show. Number four, conducting a thorough SWOT analysis can be time consuming and may require the input of, of multiple individuals, which can be resource intensive. And finally, it is just one tool among many that can be used in the strategic planning process. It should be used in conjunction with other tools and techniques and the results should be carefully analysed and integrated into a comprehensive strategy if applicable. I hope now that you can see that a SWOT analysis is a great tool for starting your organisation's strategic planning process and certainly forms a part of the tool set required to investigate, design and implement future, future strategy. My next video will be about using a unique tool that I've created myself called the SPIES analysis to strategically plan your own life. And trust me when I say it, it won't disappoint. So please look forward to that. Until then, thank you very much for watching. As always, please like and subscribe to help me grow my channel. And please click the notification bell to be notified of the latest videos. Thank you very much and goodbye.